Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so in a video I just made, I showed you how to write the vector or parametric equation of a plane. And in a video I made a couple of weeks ago, I showed you how to use the normal vector to a plane to write what's called the Cartesian or rectangular equation of a plane. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to convert uh, from the vector equation to the Cartesian equation of a plane. And this video is in part fun, in part straightforward. All right. Um, now, in the video on the vector equation of a plane, I said that uh, you can write the vector equation of a plane given three points. So let's suppose that you are given these three points that we used in the video on the Cartesian equation of a plane where we use the normal vector. So um, there in that video where we use the normal vector uh, to a plane, we saw that uh, these three points on a plane will define this plane. And uh, we could write the plane either in this way or in this way where the constant is isolated on one side. All right, cool. And what we want to show here is um, that once we use these three points to write the vector equation of a plane, uh, when we convert it to the Cartesian equation, uh, it should be consistent with what we found when we use the normal vector to arrive at the Cartesian equation, right? Okay, cool. Now, um, the vector equation of a plane is written in this way, right? Uh, where this uh, u vector is a direction vector, as is this v vector. And this vector here um, is uh, the position vector of a point on our uh, plane. And for the point on our plane, we have three choices. Why not use the point A? So uh, that means that uh, we've got two, one, and one here. So showing that, uh, we do this. And then we need to make the position vectors uh, the u vector and the v vector, right? Um, now to make them, then we could use uh, the vector AB and the vector AC. That means that first, uh, for the vector AB, which is going to be our uh, direction vector u, uh, we're going to subtract the coordinates of A from the coordinates of B, uh, and so that would mean that we have this. So uh, here's our u vector, one of our direction vectors, and again, this is the same as the vector AB. And I got there by subtracting the coordinates of A from the coordinates of B. And then the V vector, the other direction vector, uh, can be uh, the vector AC. And there, uh, uh, we find it by um, subtracting the coordinates of A from the coordinates of C. And it's pretty clear that the two vectors, the U vector and the V vector, are not parallel. So they will make good direction vectors. And so then, uh, with these handy, we could completely define the vector equation of our plane uh, with this here, right? We've got the position vector of the point A on our plane, and then uh, plus some scalar alpha uh, times the uh, direction vector U plus some other scalar beta, possibly equal to alpha, times uh, the other direction vector uh, V, where again, U and V are not allowed to be parallel. All right, now from here, we could write uh, the components of uh, this plane as being um, this for the x component, right? And let's call it equation one. And then um, this for uh, the y component, and then this for the z component. So these are the three components of the equation of our plane, right? Uh, the vector equation of our plane, which is in final form right here, right? Okay, cool. And as I said, from this final form, we can get to these three equations. Now, in the first two equations, because it will suit us for what we're about to do, which is convert this vector equation into Cartesian, let's um, isolate uh, the first two equations here uh, for um, alpha and beta. That is, basically get stuff that's not multiplying alpha and beta over on the left side of the two equations, one and two. So one can transform into this equation, I'm saying. And then two can transform into um, this equation. Now, the reason we want this is because to go from the vector equation, which I um, showed in final form as being like this right here, right? So to go from the vector equation to the Cartesian equation, what we need to do is um, basically use the three equations, one, two, and three, and eliminate alpha and beta. And of course, alpha and beta, we can only solve for in terms of x and y. So when we eliminate alpha, alpha and beta, we'll get to an equation with x and y, and then using the third equation, z. 
So that's where we want to get to the Cartesian equation, which, as you can see up top here, involves x, y, and z, right? Okay, cool. Now, again, from um, modifying equation 1, we get to this other version of equation 1. And from modifying equation 2, we get to this other version of equation 2. And then now we can use these alternate versions of equations 1 and 2 to solve for alpha and beta as a system of equations. And um, in order to successfully do that, we need to multiply the second equation by 2. That way uh, we could get, um, or by negative 2 even better, that way we could get the coefficients on beta to be opposite in sign but of equal value. And so here what, what I'm calling 2 star is basically taking the modified version of equation 2 here and then multiplying both sides of it by negative 2, which is an equivalent equation, right? Okay, cool. All right, so we take 2 star, and then we take equation 1, uh, version 2, which is like right here, right? This equation, and then the modified version of this equation, which is like modified in this way, which is like right here, right? And we take, so, equation 1 and uh, 2 star, and then um, now we could add them together and eliminate uh, beta and solve for alpha from there. So when we add them together, we get this, and solving from 4... Solving for alpha in this very last equation I just displayed, we get that alpha is equal to this. Now, going back to uh, the alternate version of equation 1 and substituting for alpha here with what we know alpha to be right here, we could solve for beta in terms of x and y. And that's what we want to do, get beta in terms of x and y. And we already have alpha in terms of x and y, and then we'll use equation 3 and substitute for alpha here an expression in terms of x and y and substitute for beta here, an equation that we're about to get in terms of x and y, and that way the third equation will be all in terms of x, y, and z. All right, so we just found alpha, right? And so like I said, using this second version of equation 1 and substituting for alpha with what we found it to be right here, we get this equation right here, yeah? Okay, cool. Now notice that um, in this equation, in this very last equation I showed, we could in the numerator, in the parentheses, uh, write 2y minus x, and that will bring a negative. And then we can cancel that negative and the negative in front of the 7. That way, what's in the parentheses will be like uh, a positive uh, expression. Or it will, like, yeah, be an expression with no negative sign in the denominator, right? Like, again, what I did is swap these two guys, and so wrote... wrote 2y minus x instead of x minus 2y, and the difference is a negative sign, right? And I cancel that negative sign with um, this negative sign in front of the 7. That way I could write this. Basically, this here is the same as this here is what I'm saying. And, of course, additionally, in what I just displayed, I have um, done what I just said about this uh, expression inside the parentheses and then added 5 times this expression inside the parentheses to both sides of this equation, right? Okay, so if you do that, then you get this. If you do all that, right? Again, first, cancel uh, the negative 7 here uh, by swapping uh, these two here and keeping the negative sign between them. That way, like, yeah, yeah, okay, I'm not going to explain that again. But basically, you could, in place of this, you could write this, and then you'll still have negative 5 times this and this expression, right? And so when you add over, um, it will turn into a plus 5. But you should know your algebra, um, yeah, yeah. Um, you're supposedly at least in pre-calc, right? Okay, all right, all right. Anyway, um, next is, um, well, we need to multiply both sides of this very last equation by a negative one-fourth or by a negative quarter. That way we get beta by itself, and beta will be this expression, right? And then finally, as I said, we're going to substitute for alpha here in the third equation by this here, and then we're going to substitute for beta here by this here, and that way, the third equation will be all in terms of x, y, and z. And uh, we need space, so let's get rid of this stuff. And um, so first, let's recall the third equation says this. And we haven't used the third equation so far, and which is why we want to use it now to uh, finish the job, right? And uh, as I said, we substitute for alpha and beta with what we know them to be. And now you see, like, that... Um, that I could multiply this 2 and this negative 1 fourth and write negative a half. Um, and I do that. And then other than that, I notice that um, if I distribute this negative 1 half 
um, then this whole expression on the right side of the equal sign will have at biggest a denominator of 14. So what I need to do to clear the denominators, which is what I need to do to get rid of all denominators in this expression, in this very last equation I showed, is to multiply both sides of the equation by 14. And when I do, that is when I multiply this second to last equation by 14 on both sides, on the left I'll get 14z, this one will turn into a 14, and then the 14 times 1 over 7 with the 7 denominator here will turn into a 2. So I'll have 2 times 3, which is 6. But otherwise, no denominator. I'll just have this numerator. So I'll have 6 times uh, this numerator here. And then in this part, uh, first, uh, for these two guys, I have a negative 1 half multiplying them, but also a 14. Remember, I said I multiplied both sides of this second to last equation by 14. So I'll have the negative 1 half multiplying this x minus 2, but also a 14. So that's the same as multiplying this x minus 2 by a negative 7. And then finally, the reason why we chose to multiply by a 14 is, in this part, I have the 5, um, and that will be a numerator on negative 1 half, but in the denominator, I'll get 2 times 7, which is 14. Since I'm multiplying both sides of this equation by 14, that 14 in the denominator um, of this here will be gone and I'll just have the negative from the one half and then the five, so negative five times this numerator, right? Okay, cool, now all you have left to do is uh, some distributive property, right? And when you do that, you get to this and I've highlighted the like terms uh, that result after the distributive property. And if you combine like terms, then you get to this. And then if you divide both sides of this equation by two, you get to this which clearly, uh, if you write uh, all the variables on one side, is the same as um, this here, which is the same as this here, which is exactly what we expected. Um, yeah? Okay, cool. All right. I hope you enjoyed this, and keep watching. Take care.